Hello, welcome everybody to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today's webinar is gonna be fun. It's gonna be on choosing the certification that's right for you. I know we've done this one in the past. Uh, I got some new slides here. Uh, so it's always a lot of fun, a lot of new faces uh, that come onto this, uh, these webinars. So my name, uh, like I said, I am Ted Stewart. Today is the webinar uh, that we will be uh, doing for you today is choosing the certification that's right for you. Uh, here's a little bit of information about my background. Uh, I am the Program Development and Compliance Manager here at Exeter. A little over 10 years of experience in uh, safety and high availability automation systems, manufacturing, and actually one of my passions is actually in lean process improvement. I don't know why people call me a nerd. I just love it. <laughs> uh, I previously worked for Lockheed Martin as a test engineer uh, with missiles and fire control in Orlando, Florida. I then moved over to Harris Corporation working with Wireless Products Group. Uh, we basically made little black boxes that could locate and track people. Super fun, had a lot of different clearances. Uh, and then I transitioned uh, over to Exeter with my wife, um, where now I reside here, where I manage the OEM certification division. I'm the deputy quality manager and also the director of the CFSC program. So it's great, I get to wear a lot of different hats. Uh, as every day is a new, uh, new fire to put out. So it always keeps me on my toes and interesting. I got two or three slides on who Exit is, and then we'll jump right into the presentation. And uh, before I do, though, uh, if you guys haven't noticed it already, there is a question toolbar there. Uh, go ahead and ask questions throughout the presentation. At the end of the presentation, I'll flip back through the slides, answer those questions for you. And then uh, after the second session of today's webinar, uh, they are the identical presentations, by the way. They're just both live at two different times. I will uh, consolidate all the questions that were asked in both sessions and uh, personally email everybody the answers to those questions so that at least you have them with you. Okay, so who we are, uh, founded in 1999 uh, by Dr. William Goebel and Reiner Fowler. Uh, Dr. Goebel is here in the United States. Uh, he has worked, he worked with Reiner Fowler um, at their previous occupations, obviously, Reiner is over in Germany. And so at day one, when Exeter started, we were a worldwide company where we had one corporate office in Germany and one corporate office in the United States. And we've grown rapidly ever since. You can see a lot of little red dots all over the world there. Uh, we've actually, our newest office is in India uh, that we just got started up this year. Now, Exeter, we are... Uh, if you don't know, we are involved with the, supply, the complete supply chain of functional safety and a lot of different industry sectors. I mean, we can do anything from the original equipment that manufacturers need that certification for their products. And then we also do the end user side uh, for those products to help them putting them into systems. So we do anything from software tools, we'll do training, consulting, procedures, everything related to functional safety, cybersecurity, uh, alarm management, I mean, even as far as machine safety, robotics, the list goes on as the demand is needed, we, we help adapt and we love to learn and, you know, re kind of reinvent ourselves all the time. And so you can see that we have six different silos of business. Uh, we have consulting, we have engineering tools, product certification, training. I think we have some type of training somewhere in the world, like every single week. Um, we have reference material, and of course, today we're going to be talking about the certifications for people, right? So whether you want to be a functional safety expert or even in cybersecurity, uh, we offer that as well, and that's rapidly growing. Uh, like I said, today we are going to talk about the personnel certification, and uh, basically what you're going to learn is that certification means things to different people, right? So their certificate programs and their certifications. And really, we're going to dive into them. There's a lot of different acronyms people use. There's a different, lot of different companies. And so really what I want to do is help you figure out which one's best for you, all right? And I want to guide you down that path. And that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to better ourselves if you're interested in doing that. And kind of something that's neat, and like I said, I am a, a nerd in this sense that I love progress, you know, Lean Six Sigma, and I love bettering myself. And, uh, you know, some people just think it's weird that I read a lot of personal development books. <laughs> but uh, my wife, she can vouch for that. Uh, anyway, so last week I was reading through, there was an article by Eric uh, 
Desk Champs. Uh, he's from Rhapsody Strategies and kind of wanted to share a few words that he he was talking about. Now, in this article, he spoke that, you know, you get what you pay for, you reap what you sow, you get out of life what you put in. And, you know, successful people, they understand these principles. And that's why they go above and beyond really what's expected. You know, they're really anything but average. And the importance of possessing uh, a clear and compelling vision of your future, you know, it, it can't really be understated. But consider this, you know, successful people, they don't just dream about extraordinary things. They don't, they, they, they do those extraordinary things. And a vision, it's got to be followed by three main things. Your determination, it's got to be, you got to be disciplined and you have to be doing it in order for it to become a reality. And, you know, those who invest much, they're going to reap those great rewards. So kind of think of the Olympics, you know, the, the athletes that are in these Olympics, you know, they're at the top of their game because why? They do more than what other people expect of them. They go above and beyond the, the call of duty to get that gold. All right. You know, they're not average in any shape, way or even any type of form. They're beasts. <laughs> and we admire them for this very fact. Now, let's let's think about that in our industry. Right. In functional safety and cybersecurity. Are we going above and beyond? And what's even more important is, look, all of these extraordinary people, they don't do it by themselves. They have teams. They have coaches. Right. So they have people helping them get to where they need to reach. And, you know, so successful people, like I said, back into our industry, you know, we get raises, we get promotions because we come into work early. We stay late. When we run out of work to do, we find more work to do it, to add value, right? To, to not only the company, but to ourselves and the people around us. And, you know, it'll further get reached through achievements. Now, kind of a kind of a fun thing and then i'll i'll, I'll kind of we'll jump off this soapbox uh, and i'll get into more of what you know the types of certifications but you know someone once wrote that there are four types of bones in the world right you got the wishbone these are people who spend their life their, and their time wishing someone would just do the work you got the jawbone this is who does all the talking right but very little of anything else. So, you know, they talk the talk, so to speak. You got the knuckle bones. These are the people who knock everything that anyone else is trying to do. Um, for lack of better words, for me, I call them the haters, right? They're always like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. And then you have the backbones. This is who people want to be. Backbones are the shoulder, the load. They get the job done. And in your organization, this is what you want to aim to be. You want to be that backbone. You want to strive to be that person who stands out from the crowd and goes above and beyond the call of duty. And they don't give in to mediocrity, right? And it, it's one of those things where it's so easy to do these small things that will eventually separate yourself from your peers. But you got to realize these small, easy things are also so very easy not to do. And then, I mean, you look back five or 10 years from now, and you're like, Wow, why am I in the exact same spot as where I am today? You know, time flies. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about ways to present uh, to you in a way that you, that's easily understood for your own path on how you can become stronger, safer, and a more reliable individual or employee for the industry. So there are three levels of competency, right? We'll call the entry tiers the first thing. It's a certificate program. And in this webinar, I'll explain what a certificate is and what a certification is. Certificate level, this is, for example, like uh, I know here at Exa, we have something called an FSP, a functional safety practitioner. It basically addresses a need to provide confirmation that an attendee showed competency by retaining knowledge presented in that course. All right. So when you look at that, the triangle there at the bottom. Uh, I could have made it any type of shape, but you can kind of see the tier approach, right? That's the bottom, right? You have functional safety practitioner, you have FS expert, FS eng, ISA 84 expert. Right? So you have all these certificate programs in there. Then the next, the next step would be to go into more of a certification, right? Certification is, uh, you see, I, I called it an upper tier. This is, um, it's operated per the standard IEC 17024. The requirements are tougher than certificate programs. And then if you go even more within the certificate program, you have what we kind of call the gold tier. And this is like a CFSC, a CACE, like I said, all these acronyms I'll explain in the next few slides, but 
This is also again 17 to 24 standard. It's a gold standard of competency demonstration. And uh, we'll kind of now go into and explain, you know, what are these differences and why do I speak the way I do for these types of programs? And remember, not these programs may not be for you, and that's okay. It's just let's make sure that we get you to where you want to be, and that's that's the ultimate story here. So, what are the differences? Now, there are many situations where one needs to provide let's call it validation that they understood material that's presented within a course. This level of competency has been proven right by many people that it's it really is accepted around the world, and when an exam is given. And it's based on training material. And, ac and an accolade is given. Like, hey, here you go. You can now use this. Uh, this is considered a certificate program. And as you see on the chart in front of you, uh, up here on the right-hand side, the results are from an educational process. Okay, This type of program is, it could be for newcomers or this is also some certificate programs are for experienced professionals, all right? It indicates completion of a course or a series of courses with a specific focus. And this is different from, uh, this is different than, a, you know, a degree granting program. Now this course content is normally determined by the specific provider or that institution. It's not standardized around the world unless that organization specifies that it is, okay? Usually, uh, people have this listed on resumes de detailing education. It demonstrates knowledge of the course content at the end, you know, of a set period of time. All right, now let's switch over to the left-hand side for a certification. What is this? So this is where people that want to become a leader, a mentor, or simply they want to be that expert in this industry. Uh, we say CFSC a lot. It can also relate to cybersecurity, which is uh, CACE. But for, the, for, the, for that sake, let's just keep to the CFSC program. It's considered basically the gold standard. And why is that? It's because this certification program does not require a training. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's not mandatory to take a training to take this exam. You can take any training you want. You can read any book you want from any organization. The ultimate goal is because this exam is standardized around the world, one organization creates the exams, one organization owns the exam content, right? That what this does is this maintains that same level of difficulty no matter where you are in the world. And they're not saying, hey, you must take this training so that you can take this exam. No, you can take any training. You might not even need to take the training. All we want to say is, hey, if you take this exam, this exam is just as hard in China as in India, as United States, as in the UK, as in Germany, as in South Africa, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. You are taking the same exam that anyone else in the world are. So if you can get these and you can pass and you are a CFC or CAC, uh, you are you took the same scrutiny of that exam. And that's what's really important. And that's what differentiates the, the, the two different programs. Uh, and so I hope that was uh, easily understood because that, that is a question that we get a lot. So there are many different types of competency programs out there in the world. Many different organizations have their own. Uh, so let's kind of go over uh, what ones are out there. You can see that CFSC, there's ISA, there's TV Ryland, TV Sud, there's us at Exeter, and there's many others that uh, didn't make this short snapshot of a list. Because uh, many people are starting to offer these things. Why? Because they're great ways to help provide uh, competency and validation that when you go and, you know, for the certificate program, which you see the blue highlight, all of these are certificate programs. It's a great way to reassure whoever's paying you. Like if so, if you work for a company and they're paying for you to go to this training course, now you can go back and say, look, I passed. I have a certificate that says, yes, I retained the information from this. And yes, it was worth your while to put me through this course. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. Or they're looking for maybe continuing education credits as well. And that's another reason certificate programs are so valid. And so you can see here, if you're with ISA, they have many different programs. TUV has two or three different programs for Rhineland. TV Sud, they have their own programs. And Exeter, you know, we also have certificate programs as well. Whether it's functional safety, it could be cybersecurity, it could be... Um, 
alarm management, fire and gas, right? So, and I, I know, and I can speak for ourselves here is that, you know, here at Exeter, we, ours are more standardized around the world for even for our certificate programs. And that's just so that we can keep the bar the same. But if you look at some of these other organizations, uh, they don't. Every training has a different exam, no matter where in the world. So you have a great training and a great exam where you could have a training that's not so good and a not so good exam, but you guys could have the same accolades, right? You could be XYZ expert, but you, it could mean two different things because that exam isn't the same. Uh, so it's kind of hard to base it. And uh, so, yeah, there's that. So you can see all the different acronyms. If there's one that you don't understand, let me know and I'll answer it at the end. I know that there are some questions here. Let me make sure that my screen is active. That happened to me last webinar. One second here. Okay, perfect. Yes, okay, so it is active and I am having questions. So great, I will answer all those questions here at the end. So thank you, keep asking them and I will get to those. Okay, continue here. Right, so, and then this was just the, the green arrow was, or the green circle was just saying that this is the certification program. All right, so where do you fit in? really the it, it's not one that i can just say oh you're here it's it's really you fit in where you feel it's best for yourself so if you're in the early stages and you want to learn then that certificate program is absolutely a perfect starting point if you have been in the industry for, for 5 10 15 20 years now you get a you you get a choice and it depends on how immersed you want to be in that subject area that you're going to choose because you can go straight, you don't have to take a certificate program. You can go straight into the certification program because I see a lot of people, actually what I do see is if they don't know which one's best for them, I see a lot of people being proactive. They sign up for a CFSC, they sign up for a CACE, right? So now I kind of, I shared with you what those acronyms mean. If you look on the screen there, I spelled them out. They, they sign up for one of these programs they sit a training and they say, okay, now let me sit this training. Let me try and pass this exam at the end for the certificate. If I pass, well, I already signed up to be uh, to take the certification, but you still get that choice. You can say, you know what? I need to study more. Uh, let me come back and I'll take the exam at a later time. And you're able to do that. There's no one that says you must take this exam right away. Uh, but at least you get your paperwork done. You can do all that. And so basically what I'm trying to say is like there's so many different ways to gain knowledge. There's so many different training courses out there. Pick the one you like. Pick the company you feel is taking the initiative to help you. Right. Who? The, I think the biggest thing is that it's all about association. Who you surround yourself is who you become. Right. So same thing in our company uh, in this industry is. Whoever you feel is doing the best job at getting you that information, surround yourself with those people so they can help get you to where you want to be, to whatever level, to what extent you want to be at. Because each person is going to be different. Each company is different. So you need to kind of chart your own path on where you want to go. Yes, there are advantages to both programs, right? So if you want to do a certificate program, there's a lot of advantages that people don't think about, right? One, it provides the proof of competency. It increases your value right? As an employee, because now you say, hey, look, I did retain this information. Uh, I did do this. It di differentiates yourself from your competitors, from your peers. Um, and, you know, what's, what's also nice about a certificate program is it lets you see if you're ready to take, if you want to take that next step to that certification level. And um, one thing that's kind of interesting that I don't see a lot of people, well, some people do take advantage of it, but I put an example there at the bottom there. Like if you do pass this FSP um, or a certificate type program, put it in your signature. Let people know. Be proud that you did pass it. And th this is just an example of how you could do something like that, right? So you can have Jane Doe. She's the director of design group marketing. You can see that she presents her FSP number there, her phone number, email at whatever company she works for. In this case, it's the best company. <laughs> Uh, but you can see like it, it's it's just that one level to differentiate yourself and you can do this logo in all different ways, shapes and form, whatever fits your signature. And it's just a great way uh, to help share with people and let them know that you are becoming that expert. So what would you see on a typical certificate program? Well, something like this. So this is in a process uh, exam. So this is a functional safety practitioner. The question is a pressure transmitter has a systematic capability rating of cell three. So what does that mean? What can this, what, what can you do with this? Uh, a, 
This transmitter can be used in any SIL level. Uh, this transmitter, it's excluded from systematic capability evaluation because it's a SIL-3. Uh, this field instruments, they're excluded from systematic capability evaluation. This device may be used in a SIL-1, SIL-2, or SIL-3 design, SIF design, or this transmitter may be used in any SIF related below SIL-3. Think about that. If you knew the answer, you might not know the answer, but many would. And they'd say, well, of course, it's going to be D. Why? It can't be A, because there are things called so fours, maybe like in the nuclear aviation sector that could possibly be shown. Uh, so it can't be used in cell four if it's a cell three. Uh, nothing is excluded. Cell three just means it's actually there's more requirements. There's more things that have to be evaluated. So B and C can't be possible. And of course, E is not because uh, it's saying below cell three in it. And actually, a SIL-3 application can be used in a SIL-3 SIF. Makes sense. Let's do one more question here. A little more tricky. A lot of people uh, aren't familiar with this one as much. And it's, in order to reduce uh, dangerous stiction failures in a spool-type solenoid valve, automatic stroke tests uh, it's des is designed at what test rate interval? So stiction is interesting. What stiction really is, is an easy example. Is it's kind of like that coffee mug, right? You you drink coffee in the morning, you put it down on your table. All of a sudden, your boss or you got an emergency fire, you have to go out and you have to go figure something out. You don't get back to your desk at the end of the day and then you pack up and you go home. You come back, that coffee's still sitting there. You go and you pick up that coffee mug and it sticks a little bit. Huh, that was weird. That's, that's a fun way of saying what stiction is. So you can imagine if something's out in the field, and it's not being used very often and it just sits there in whatever atmosphere it's in, there's some friction that builds up and that's what's called stiction. And in this case, what happens is uh, statistics have shown that this is, if something sits for about, uh, in, in your industry, if it's a valve, right? In this case, a solenoid valve, if it sits for roughly 200 hours, signs of stiction actually occur. And so that means on the ninth day of no movement, stiction's already set in to some degree, right? So it might not be enough to really cause it to not operate or to work when it needs to work, but there is a sign that there's some friction already building within that valve. And that's what I think is very interesting. So in this case, it'd be uh, once per week would be the correct answer. All right, so what are the advantages? Now let's switch gears to the certification. Right, we talked about certificate. Now let's talk about the certification advantages. Were well, there going to be everything the certificate uh, has plus more? So now this will really enhance your value as an employee. It differentiates yourself once again from your competitors or your employees within the same workspace. Uh, now, uh, even on job resumes and job positions out there, they're now starting to require a certification. Hey, you must be this if you want to work this position. If you want to be maybe a an SIS uh, lead, right, or a functional safety manager. Uh, they're now requiring these types of certifications, so it can kind of set that bar a little higher. Once again, yeah, you can use the credentials on your signature. In the bottom left-hand corner there, you can see that Jane Doe is apparently also <laughs> a cyber expert. And uh, you can see how they use their the logo there as well. So just some creative ways on how you can present it. Yeah, uh, this also indicates being a certification indicates that mastery or that competency. And um, and then, of course, you are looked upon as a mentor or leader in that industry. And that's why it's considered that gold standard. There's many different programs out there for even within CFSC and CFSP to become one of these experts. So you don't have to just know process industry or 61508 or 61511. I mean, you could become a CFSC or CFSP in automotive and machinery and process and safety hardware, safety software, even in cybersecurity. Now, there's some of these courses, just bear with us, uh, are still in development, but they're coming out quickly. But the ones that are currently available, are, you could be a cybersecurity expert in IT and OT. Uh, the, the next one that's going to be ready soon is the, the OEM cybersecurity, right, to IEC 62443. Uh, then there's going to be cybersecurity for ICS uh, engineering integration, operations engineer, operate maintenance, and there's so much more. There's going to be a robotics uh, cybersecurity. So let us know what you're interested in because guess what? The squeaky wheel. 
you know, that's the one that's going to get the oil, right? That's the one that's going to get the most attention. And right now, ITOT was a huge need. And now OEM is becoming a huge need. So these courses are being developed. And the reason they take a while is because we have people from all over the world writing these questions for us. And we're going to be putting them together because why we want to keep that, that global uh, standard. We want to keep the bar high. And so uh, what, what we know is one thing, but what an end user sees, what a manufacturer sees, what all these different types of companies sees are different. And so we want to make sure we get a collection of questions that cover everything. And so there's a lot of work that goes into it, uh, but it's always so worth it when you when you do something right the first time. People say, oh, wow, well, you know, th this all sounds like great information, but, you know, where can I do my own study? Where can I, can I get my own information? Well, personally, you know, I do work at Exa, so here's stuff that I know we can offer. You're going to have to do maybe some Google searches if you go elsewhere. But, for example, there are resources available. There are study guides uh, there's a process study guide for CFSC. There's an ITOT study guide for cybersecurity out there. You have book packages. Uh, another thing that's that's hot right now is online training, right? So we've now started doing more on more online training. So all of these uh, bread and butter courses that everyone takes can now start be taking online. Me personally, yeah, you can't be a face to face. There's, some, there's something that we should not get away from. I know there's a lot of millennials that think everything needs to be online and not so one-on-one. -on -one. I personally just, I just think that, I mean, if you have an instructor in front of you, it's just phenomenal. However, if you don't have that time or you need to kind of train yourself through the day or when you get work gets low, hey, I can take some courses, online's the best way to go than that. And like, and so, yeah, you can navigate, you can go to shopexit.com. Actually, what I'll do here is uh just real quickly i can even share with you that when you go to this is actually i was actually huh, what do you know i was look i was doing an online training right now uh for 211 all right anyway sorry when you go to the extra website what you can do is right here you can go to resources right and then all of a sudden here's blogs there's webinars you can go to all the white papers are free there's case studies um uh, anything that you would need is on here and then if you go to the store Right, you can you can shop. You want software, you want books. Here's your online courses. There's templates, and you can come here and you can select whatever you need. So uh, we always have questions. Well, where can I find this information? And that's just a quick way uh, to help share that information. Let me get back into my presentation mode here, if you guys don't mind. Awesome. Okay, so that was that's pretty neat. So and and then when you do want to know more, if you want to start becoming the expert, use us. Let us give you the information and then you go off and be that expert and there's so many ways that you can follow us to make sure that you get the latest and greatest information and then when you do have questions you can email me you can email academy at exa.com that you see there and you can start immersing yourself in this type of stuff so these are all the trainings that just in a snapshot i kind of just kind of threw something together uh you can see that i mean there's courses around the world this is just a small set of courses that are going on currently and yeah, so that was the biggest thing. And that's what we wanted to share with you because we're getting a lot of questions on certifications and certificate programs. And they're saying, man, there's all these different accolades and there's all these different abbreviations for what seem like the same thing from all these different companies. And so we wanted to help share with you how we decipher from all the different organizations. So here we go. Um, great. Hey, Joey says, I can see your screen. Hey, thanks so much, Joey. I appreciate that. That does help me. <laughs> uh, so, okay. I got some questions here. Let's go ahead and, uh, answer them. So how many hours should I study for the exam? And can I take the course, then take the exam and pass easily? <laughs> easily is a tricky word there. Uh, so how many hours, let me, the first part of that question is how many hours should I study for the exam? Uh, I know, and I don't know if I have it on the slide. I might actually, what is it? actually, if you see the slide, that fourth bullet point, really what we've been seeing, those who have the highest success rate are people who take at least three months to study if you're doing a certification, right? CFSP or CFSE. We always say, look, get yourself you might be doing functional safety work every single day. However, a lot of these exams, and I've only taken personally the CFSP, but a lot of these exams are based around the standards as well. So even though you might be immersed into functional safety, take that second, look through the standards, look through what's out there because 
these exams are based off of the latest and greatest uh, industry information. Uh, so there might be some stuff you might need to just freshen up on. Okay, but that, that was a great question. And so they said, can I take the course then what, when I take the exam, will I pass easily? <laughs> you know what? I can tell you yes and I can tell you no. And why I can't give you exact answers because I don't know what you know. You might be a control engineer. Uh, you, you might be someone that's in functional safety a lot. It could be easy for you. Yeah, you might not even need to take that exam, but taking the exam is a great refresher. I always tell people, yeah, go do, do whatever training you feel is best for you and, and then gauge yourself. Okay, was that easy? Was that hard? Can I take this exam? Do I feel like it's worth it? And then, then you make your decision. And you don't have to be on the spot and say, well, I have to. I paid for it. No, you can, you can pay for it. And then you can sit back and say, okay, let me, let me take an extra few weeks and then I'll take the exam. That's a good question. But thank you for asking that. All right. Once we get a certificate, how long will it be valid? Uh, that depends on what agency you go through. Uh, I know for us here at Exeter, uh, because we feel a certificate program is, it can be an entry level or it can be an expert taking this type of program, there is no expiration, right? So once you become an FSP for us, we feel like that's good. You don't need to renew it. Um, but there's many other training courses that you can take and earn different accolades uh, as well. So I do know that there's agencies that even require like 10 years to take their certificate program. And, you know, they're basically saying, look, you need 10 years experience before you can take our training course. I don't know how I feel about that, but you know what, that, that's just saying, hey, look, what the information you're going to be get, we want people to have experience. We don't want to be wasting our time with people that are new in the industry. We want to only teach the experts. And that's one way to do it. But for us, there's no requirement. Uh, for a certificate program, we just say, look, you come in, if you can retain the information off that training course and you can pass an exam, why do you need more experience than that to provide competency? Some people learn faster than others. Uh, now for the CFSE, those are good for three years. And uh, you, because what we say, is, look, if you're going to be an expert or a mentor in our industry, uh, you can pass the exam, but hey, look, things change so fast. So every three years you need to provide knowledge that yes, you did take the, uh, that you that you are continuing education, that you didn't switch roles. Uh, now you don't have to retake the exam again. Uh, you just need to provide, comp you need to provide uh, information that you are still in the field taking the, the course. Let's see here. Okay, I have another question here. Um, I have the TV Rhineland FS engineer SIS certification. I have worked on four years of safety systems. How much safety system experience is required for CFSC? That's a great question. Uh, and what we can do, if I can quickly do this. Uh, let's see how I am at navigating. I'm going to go to Canada Information. Let me minimize my toolbar over here so I can navigate. Of course, you're going to go right in the way. There we go. All right. Um, to answer your question, this is – oh, I just had it. All right. So to answer your question, here's the requirements. If you look middle – so if you want to be a CFSC, you need a minimum of 10 years work-related experience. All right. So if you do have a degree, let's say you have an engineering degree and it's a bachelor degree, then right away there's three years that you can take off from the 10. So then you would need seven years of work experience in the area. Um, if you have a master's, you can subtract four. A PhD, you can subtract six years. Um, if you have a PE, you can subtract another additional year. So let's see here. So you said you are... You've been four, four years on safety systems. Now, keep in mind that even if you were as an engineer, maybe, those years would probably still count as well. So the best thing to do is just email uh, me or email our, our admin, the CFC admin, and they can really confirm that. But if you have four years on safety systems and you have a degree, you're probably pretty close to being able to take the CFC, I would say, because uh, I don't know if you have other experience beyond that. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Those were good questions. Let me pull back the presentations. So if you guys have questions on that. Perfect. 
and that's it. Uh, so that was all the questions for today. If you think of more, you have my email in front of you. Feel free. Uh, I always get some fun emails because there's a lot of surprises. Some people don't realize all that's entailed. Really, all my 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 answer to you is: look, find what's best for you. Pick who you think is leading the way. Have fun with the people. Make sure that you surround yourself by competent people so they can help bring you up and you're not the best. If you're the best at where you are, get some new friends. Find people better than you because there's no way to plateau yourself than to be the best around you. Always find people that you think might be even better if that's even possible so that you can continue to grow and, and get better. So, hey, thanks so much, everyone. I really appreciate Oh, one more question just came in. Hold on. I almost, I almost finished. <laughs> uh, how much, how much would the certification cost for CFC? All right. Well, I can answer all these questions. Really, uh, what I want to say is just go to this site here, uh, exacfc.com, and in here are all the fees, the everything that you need to know about uh, those questions. Uh, here, pay fees. See, this is something that almost everyone can do. You can you can go through here. You can see all the different fees. So right there in front of you, depending on what you want to be, those are the costs right there. Awesome. And like I said, this requires no training. So this is just the exam. All right. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome. I see a bunch of thank yous on here, so you're very welcome. I'll be doing this again in about five or six hours, the exact same presentation, but if you want to talk to me live, you can do so. And of course, anyone that listens to this will get the slides. Uh, we'll have this recorded, uh, this webinar recorded, where, uh, like I said, if you go to resources here, uh, all the webinars are listed on the website here. You can go here, check everything out. Everything will be there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care for now. Bye-bye.